Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be specifically about our renovation that we did on one of our properties and how that whole thing went down. So if you're interested in hearing about that, just keep on watching. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that you can know when I upload new videos. Also, you can hit the notification bell as well just so that you're notified whenever we come out with new videos. So anyways, let's get right into it. So wait, let's talk about um, like why we decided and how that whole thing came about. Um, I guess I can start. So I think we got, we got, we did this flip in 2019. I remember because I was pregnant with Lore and um, that year we were going to, we decided we were going to buy a property to just a regular investment property um, to um, you know invest in. But I remember thinking like, okay, let's wait until Lore comes out because I wasn't, I don't know, I just wanted to, I just didn't want so many things going on at the same time. So I was like, let's have this baby first and then we can um, buy a property. But yeah, so I remember it was like September period and it was like your birthday period. And I was like, you know what? For your birthday, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this renovation. Let's let's just do it. Cause initially we were just gonna buy a regular property, but we're like, you know what? Like I just I just said, we like problems. Like problems. <laughs> I don't want peace. I want problems always. Um, that's how like that whole thing got kicked off. I'll try and insert some videos of like uh, when we were going around looking for properties. To I think I took some uh, some videos of that whole process. All right, we are we are at another one that we are potentially looking at to buy and remodel. Um, this one's going for a little bit more, so we're trying to figure out why. Okay, it looks like they've done some work. I guess that's why it's going up. It's going for a higher price, I guess. Yeah. It looks done up recently, like the paint and stuff. It looks fresh. Yeah. Very tiny fast kitchen. So this one is more of one that you would just buy right now. Like there's nothing to do. Um, Maybe a little bit of work, but nothing like there's nothing nothing crazy. Even our fridge that looks relatively decent. Yeah. I didn't get it just so So for a hundred K that's not really bad. Like to just buy them right now. This rug is atrocious. Yeah, you know. terrible. Why would they do this? I hope they did not put this in. I, I, I hope think this was already here. I think it's gross. So this two bedroom and then it really study. It literally looks like somebody attempted to remodel this and just gave up. You think so? I think they just did the bare minimum and then they're like, okay, we're done. But it doesn't look bad though. It looks okay. Like it reminds me of the one that we have in um. I don't want to mention the street, but yeah, the one that we have, one yeah. of the ones that we have. It's not enough light. What do you mean? Like, how can this whole living room space only that tiny as This is not one that you'd get to re, re, re yeah. from. Like, This is just one to buy at it and do light touch ups. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not really. Hope it works. So, how much is this one? Uh, put an offer for 79000 You put the offer? This is, oh, okay, this is where you put the offer. This yeah. is the second one or the first one you say you can offer them? This is the second one. Kitchen area. 
benefits of having this random ass wall. Cutting everything off. Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about like the finance part of it. How did that whole thing work out as far as like getting a loan for the property, buying the property, hard money, all of that. Just go ahead. Alright. Um so we this was not a straightforward process. It was very tedious, had a lot of bumps in the road. But to begin the story, we identified a place that we wanted to buy. And before this, I had reached out to some hard money lender, did um, application for a loan, and the loan can only progress till, like, until you find the place you're gonna purchase. So figure out the place and then start the application process. And what they do during the underwriting is to see what the potential value of the place would be after the renovation to determine how much they're going to lend to you. It came to be that the lender I use, lesson number one, is use hard money lenders that are familiar with the markets you're in. I just went on Google and searched hard money lenders in Texas, which was not the best idea for this situation because they didn't really understand the area, which was an area where we typically invest in. And for what I was going to do, they didn't feel like the after value was going to match um, what I predicted. So long story short, they were meant to finance the purchase and renovation. But then they decided that based on their initial appraisal value, they would only finance the renovation. Yeah. So you know what that meant? We had to buy the house cash. Very annoying. The I whole the whole house you cash. The whole house cash. <laughs> so this was very painful because I like to have. We can say let's let's give numbers. Let's give numbers. It was like eighty thousand, right? Yeah. So we had to drop eighty thousand like that on a house that was it run down me. that was run it down it and if you if you look at the house um yeah there was nothing to write home about so <laughs> i'll put a video of it what it looked like here You know what worst case scenario and this is where strong mentality comes i remember there was a point and props to tani for uh being my shokab zoba because i go crazy sometimes at some point i was like tani do we really need to do this because this is getting crazy because you know felt like at every step of the way we were like bleeding cash and now we get hit with this eighty thousand dollar um expense and she was like, you know, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it, blah, 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 and kind of set me straight. And worst case scenario, we're gonna learn something from this, right? So went ahead and, you know, started the process, got the work going. And at this point, you're thinking like, how can I not have such a massive outflow of cash? So one of the things we did was any activity that did not require skill, I decided I was gonna do it myself. So from demo to like breakdown and some certain like cutting for the framing, I was doing all that myself. I got some help from some, actually a coworker of mine, shout out to you, Alex, who like came in and helped with some of the work as well. I appreciate it. It's always good to have good friends who are willing to help out. <laughs> started that whole process and yeah that was that was how we got it going to the very end without all the other hiccups in between yeah but so typically like you would get a loan for both the you know purchase purchase and the uh renovation so ours is a little bit different a little bit more uh, yeah. yeah that's the finance the financial part of it so let's talk a little bit about um just like the process of the actual renovation. Like how did that work? Like what was the week by week situation? 
Um, process of renovation. Keep in mind that when you're borrowing funds, you pay interest on it daily. So every day you're in construction and not out of the, uh, the hard money loan. It's interest you pay, and I think we got a 12% interest rate, so it can add up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I was very optimistic. One thing about construction that you would know a little bit of background. We had to tear this house down to the studs. It was not very, very few things that were salvageable in there. Yeah. So we tore it down. And the thing about construction is the beginning part moves very fast. And so you think, oh man, we're gonna get done in record time. We're gonna do this in one month. And then when it gets to like the details, cause like when you do the framing, when you do the roof, you do the HVAC, you do like, you know, things like the big stuff, right? It, it, it moves very quickly. And then you get to like cabinets and you get to like countertops and you get to like appliance fittings and you get to light fixtures and you get to trimmings for the, you know, tow boards and those take, oh, and then flooring, yes. Those take a long time and I didn't realize. So initially it was going really fast, you know, we did, I think, in retrospect, I probably should pay people to do the demo in like one or two days, but decided to like save money. And then the end, I was paying interest, but actually I hadn't started making draws at that time. So there was no interest, but did the demo in about a week and a half. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize it took that long. I thought it took like a couple days. We did the demo in parts mm -hmm. so that construction could start behind it, but we're still demoing. Oh, so, okay. so, um, um, what was I saying? But so yeah, did the demo and then started a lot of the big work, like framing, I had developed a plan for, because we, it was originally a two bedroom, one bath house that we made an addition to the back and converted into a four bedroom, two bath house to increase the value. Um, then, you know, when we did all the reframing of the house, so adjust things, leveling, all the addition in the back, uh, creating the new rooms, plumbing for the new bathroom and all that good stuff. Then, um, yeah, we continued with construction and got all the fine crafts to come in. And I think the overall timeline for construction was like about two months and about a week yeah. for everything to get done. And this whole thing, keep in mind, I was working full time <laughs> during this whole period. So I would go to work, leave work, do work at the house after work, get calls during the day about to manage construction, um, contractors coming in. One of the things that I did to help expedite time was instead of paying for the contractors to go source the materials and, you know, bring them to the property and then start work. I asked for all the materials they needed and so went and bought them. So all they needed to do was show up to the house and work. So when it came to like drywall, I got all the drywall boards, came to like, you know, tile, <laughs> went and bought a whole bunch of tiles, got delivered at the house with all the things they needed. So they just showed up and worked because obviously they're gonna charge a markup on top of that stuff if they were gonna source it themselves. So. We got, had to learn how to drive like trucks with trailers, how to, you know, cause you have to rent all this. You can't put all these in like a regular car and we both have sedan cars. So we're not gonna be doing construction stuff in there. And at the point I didn't have a friend who had a truck. So now I do. Thanks Alex, again. Um, but you know, it's it was definitely an ordeal trying to make everything work at, at that point. Interesting period. Yeah, I was very like stressful period. I think it was more stressful because of like the um, money, like the yes, the, the money, the way we had to because we had to pay, pay. We were paying weekly. So we got a loan for the construction, right? But the way the construction loan works is you do the work first. They look at what was done mm -hmm. to see that it's what was prescribed and then they give you the money for that line item in the loan that you said that activity was gonna cost. So let's say for example, 
we we put in a new roof on this house new roof ten thousand dollars so in the line item for the budget with the lender we said ten thousand dollars for roof you have to have the roof completely done and then call out their inspector to come look at the roof and say yes there's a brand new roof here and then you get uh, the funds for ten thousand dollars so we have to like pay for the activities up front and then we get reimbursed afterwards as opposed to getting the money and then going doing the work which yeah. made the cash flow situation a little bit tight yeah, yeah it, was, it was very tense <laughs> yeah. and then the thing is that you're not trying to slow down the work so that you can get a draw you want to keep things moving you don't want the fact that you know you're waiting for the inspector to come in so credit cards are really helpful if you're doing a flip, get a credit card that has like perfect rewards because you could get a lot. I really wish we had our Amex at this point because yeah, God damn. we spent a lot of money on credit cards. Like you know, you're going to buy the sheetrock to sheetrock a whole house. You're gonna buy tiling for the whole house. You're gonna buy like roof and shingles. You're gonna buy two by fours to reframe a whole brand new section of the house. And I you're using your credit card obviously because you know you're gonna get. It, the expectation is that you're gonna get that money back from the uh, loan. That yeah. you just you just pay off the credit card. Yeah. So instead of having to use your own money, really, yeah. you're just using the credit card. Yeah. Um, yep. As a way to not to touch your own money, if that makes sense. Yep. So, all right. So that's all the um, money stuff. So let's just talk about, I guess, going forward. Would we do it again? Have we done it again? Um, yeah. Right. The answer is you sure I know the answer on that. No, <laughs> I wanted to get. Yeah, I mean, granted, the one we did was really like hard. It was it was not the typical. Well, like it depends on what typical it is. Some people. I mean, know. if we got a loan for both the home and the construction, it like, would have been a little would, bit. It would yeah. helped us a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then the place we picked, I mean, everything was horrible. Like the roof, every, the elect electrical, plumbing, everything had to be yeah. redone. Every so like that's not really a typical, I, I mean, I feel like a typical one would be, okay, you get the, the loan for the home and the renovation, plus maybe few touch-ups here few touch-ups here maybe one major thing is wrong but not every single major thing being, being we tore the house down literally we basically just built a new house like that's yeah. basically what we did which i feel like is not very typical so maybe because of that we're a little bit burned from doing these renovations but also i guess just for the time that we both don't have like yeah. i don't know what we were thinking like yeah. doing that but we yeah. just don't have like the time to do those like really tough renovations but I do not regret it because I look at every experience as a learning opportunity. Oh yeah, we I definitely learn learn a lot. A lot from yeah. that experience and I would not not do that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm glad I'm definitely glad we did it. Came out to see the house today and the progress that's been made. I have never been able to come obviously because I can't bring her with me, but um oops. But yeah, I haven't been able to come because I can't bring her with me, but it's pretty much clear or mostly clear today. So we decided to stop by and it's looking pretty good. Let's see the progress. Ooh, can I come in with her in? I would, yeah, just take a look. I wouldn't, it's pretty dusty in there. Yeah. <laughs> value provided us ended up making like 30,000 from the overall appraised value and then we had the ultimate goal was to rent out this house and so with the rental the cash flow from the rental amount after the appraisal was about a thousand dollars a month or is about a thousand dollars a month so the house pays for itself in about two and a half years so that's kind of the deal so Started in 2020, so by next year the house would have paid for it. Sorry, 2019. 
So by next year, sometime middle of next year, the house will have paid for itself and everything will be absolutely profit from that. And so in the end, it's, it's, it's an okay deal. Yeah. As far as the appraisal value, the initial like, you know, bump in appraisal, it could have been more, uh, but you know, and since we knew we were gonna rent it out, we weren't too stressed about that. Yeah. What happened with that? Weren't they like kind of like, I thought there was a lot of bias. Yes, there was. Cause I, I'm, I'm sure some of y'all might be aware, but like those, um, what's it called? Appraisers, like. I don't, I, yeah. Some of them are residential appraisals. Appraisals, it's very subjective. Very. And so, if you have any unconscious bias or conscious bias, aka racism, um, <laughs> that can play a big part in it. And that's that's just one of our examples. There's been another example where we've gotten an appraisal and we're like, what? yeah, <laughs> like it's not making any sense. Yeah. So. But. Anyways, that's a whole other video. Um. But yeah, like I think it's been an overall great purchase. It's massive uh, piece of land that the house sits on. So worst case scenario in the future, after the house is paid for itself, if we wanted to build something else on top of it, we could just tear down our work. But no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I have a very sentimental attachment. And especially it's on a corner lot as well. So it's, it's pristine, pristine location. So I'm really happy about that. All right, I have to go grab the baby because she was uh, getting a little fussy. So yeah, in general, would we do it again? Probably, no. Well, let me not say definitely not. Probably not, yeah. um, but we're glad that we did it because we learned a lot from it. And it was also just a good investment, just like cash-wise. Yeah. Um, and then also, the reason we're probably not gonna do it again is because we found other efficient ways to value add into properties without going through the actual stress of doing the value add. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, when you find ways around it, the incentive to go through that stress again is not, it's not very high. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, I know we said a lot. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on our other social media platforms. Follow her. So, they should follow you on IBK Realty now. Oh yeah, that too. That Sorry. he never posts though. But just still follow him, even though he never posts. That's why my friends tell me to follow him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, follow me on Instagram, also on TikTok. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. Thank you. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>